Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series reading, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Without further ado, returning to The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn as read by Lord Naren White. Them rapscallions took in $465 in that three nights. I never see money hauled in by the wagon load like that before. By and by, when they was asleep and snoring, Jim says, Don't it surprise you the way them king carries on, Huck? No, I says, it don't. Why don't it, Huck? Well, it don't, because it's in the breed, I reckon. They're all alike. But, Huck, these kings are is regular rapscallions. That just is what they is. They's regular rapscallions. Well, that's what I'm a saying. All kings is mostly rapscallions, as far as I can make it out. Is that so? You read about them once, you'll see. Look at Henry the Eighth. This is a school Sunday school superintendent to him. And look at Charles II, and Louis the Fourteenth, and Louis XV, and James II, and Edward II, and Richard III, and forty more besides all them Saxon heptarchies that used to rip around and sow in old times and raise Cain. My, you ought to seen old Henry the Eighth when he was in bloom. He was a blossom. He used to marry a new wife every day and chop off her head next morning. And he would do it just as indifferent as if he were ordering up eggs. Fetch up Nell Gwynn, he says. They fetch her up next morning. Chop off her head. And they chop it off. Fetch up Jane Shore, he says. And up she comes. Next morning. Chop off her head. And they chop it off. Bring up Fair Ro Rosamund. Fair Rosamund answers the bell. Next morning. Chop off her head. And he made every one of them tell him a tale every night. And he kept that up till he had hogged a thousand and one tales that way. Then he put them all in a book and called it the Doomsday Book, which was a good name and stated the case. You don't know, Jim, but I know them. And this old Rip Arn is one of the cleanest I've struck in history. Well, for Henry, he takes a notion. He wants to get up some trouble with this country. How does he go at it, give notice, give the country a show? No. All of a sudden he heaves all the tea in Boston Harbor overboard and whacks out a declaration of independence and dares them to come on. That was his style. He never gave anybody a chance. He had suspicions of his father, the Duke of Wellington. Well, what did he do? Ask him to show up. No. Drowned him in a butt of Mamsie, like a cat. Suppose people left money laying around where he was. What did he do? He collared it. Suppose he contracted to do a thing. And you paid him, and didn't sit down there and see that he'd done it. What did he do? He always done the other thing. Suppose he opened his mouth. What then? If he didn't shut it up powerful quick, he'd lose a lie every time. That's the kind of a bug Henry was. And if we'd a had him along stead of our kings, he'd a fooled that town a heap worse than Arne done. I don't say that Arne is lamps, because they ain't. And when you come right down to the cold facts, but they ain't nothing to that old ram anyway. All I say is, kings is kings, and you got to make allowances. Take them all around, and they're a mighty ornery lot. It's the way they're raised. But this one do smell like the nation, huh? Well, they all do, Jim. We can't help the way a king smells. History don't tell no way. Now the duke, he's a tolerable likely man in some ways. Yes, a duke's different, but not very different. This one's a middling hard lot for a duke. When he's drunk, there ain't no nearsighted man could tell him from a king. Well, anyways, 
I don't hanker for no more. Um, um, Huck, this is all I can stand. It's the way I feel too, Jim. We've got them on our hands, and we've got to remember what they are and make allowances. Sometimes I wish I could hear of a country that's out of kinks. What was the use to tell Jim these weren't real kings and dukes? It wouldn't have done no good, and besides, it was just as I said. You couldn't tell them from the real kind. I went to sleep, and Jim didn't call me when it was my turn. He often done that. When I waked up just at daybreak, he was sitting there with his head down betwixt his knees, moaning and mourning to himself. I didn't take low notice nor let on. I know what it was about. He was thinking about his wife. And his children. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was low and homesick, because he hadn't ever been away from home before in his life. And I do believe he cared just as much for his people as white folks does for them therein. It don't seem natural, but I reckon it's so. He was often moaning and mourning that way nights, when he judged I was asleep, and saying, Poor little Elizabeth, poor little Johnny, it's mighty hard. I expect I ain't never gonna see you no more, no more. He was a mighty good black, Jim was. But this time I somehow got to talking to him about his wife and young ones. And by and by he says, What makes me feel so bad this time is because I hear something over yonder on the bank like a whack or a slam a while ago and it minor and it mind me or the time I treat my Elizabeth so ornery. She weren't only about for a year old, and she tucked a scarlet fever and had a powerful rough spell. She got well one and one day. She was a standing around, and I says to her, I says, She to do. She never done it. Just stood there, kind of smiling up at me. It make me mad, and I says again, mighty loud, I says, Don't you hear me, she to do? She just stood the same way. Kind of smiling up. I was bawling, I says, I lay, I'll make you mine. And with that, I fetch her a slap beside the head that sent her a sprawling. Then I went into the other room, and I was gone about ten minutes. And when I come back, that was that do with standing open yet. And that chilly standing mouse right in with it. And looking down in the morning, and the tears running down. My, but I was mad. I was a goin' for the chili, but just then, it was a doodad open in it, just then. Long come the wind and slam it too, behind the chili, her blam. And me land, the chili never move, me breath moss hop out of me, and I feel so-so. I don't know how I feel. I crop out, all a tremble, and crop around, and Open to do easy and slow. And poke my head in behind the chair. So if it's still. And all of a sudden I says, Pow! Just as loud as I could tell. She never budge. Oh, Huck. I bust out of crying and grab her up in my arms and say, Oh, the poor little thing. The Lord God Almighty forgive poor old Jim, because he never going to forgive himself as long as he live. Oh, she was plumb deep and dumb. Huck, plumb deep and dumb. And I'd been a treating her so. We'll go ahead and stop there for this week, as we will start chapter 24 next week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe, as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care, and thanks again.